Hello, hello, everyone. It's time to try to beat Metal Slug on just five credits, a five credit clear, which means we can only continue four times. And uh, this is the Steam port. I finally got it working. That said, please do not play the Steam port. It is really quite bad. They utterly butchered the audio. The sound effects uh, are completely out of pitch. The music is out of tune. It's, it's a disaster, and then there are all the control issues I had to go through, and this port has slowed down. Just play the Anthology Collection instead. Just okay. wherever you can get the Anthology Collection, play that instead. Okay. But still, uh, th this, is, uh, this is the easiest way for me to record myself playing Metal Slug, so that's what we're doing. Even if I'm not happy about the port. This opening area is... Uh, is more or less just to get you used to the basic flow of gameplay. There are, uh, there are POWs to rescue that give you power-ups. There are men who jump across the screen at you and will try to murder you. And the first big enemy right here. You just move to the left a bit to avoid the bombs. Those bombs will kill us in one hit, as everything will kill us in one hit. This is a very traditional uh, run and gun, where you die fast and hard. But the enemies also die rather fast and hard to make up for that. Let's see if we can, uh, yeah. We want to take these guys out from a distance. If we can. There we go. I wasn't quite cooperating that time. Sometimes it goes better than others. So the Metal Slug is what we're driving right now. It has a limited movement, but it does have three hits, and it's extremely powerful. It has a machine gun, as you can see, that fires a constant spew of blue bullets if you smash the shoot button. And it also has a cannon that fires in an arc. And determining the, the arc and explosive radius of the cannon is essential to using the Metal Slug. It is super important. Those were hidden POWs up there. Sometimes they're hidden in the environment like that. If you, if you uh, get them all, I do believe you get a special score multiplier at the end. This is the first boss, this massive cannon, which shoots blue uh, blue bullets and occasionally massive blue lasers. I can't make any promise we'll see the massive blue lasers, though. You just want to move... Uh, oh, here comes the laser. You just duck, You just duck and jump over those. That went really well. I've, uh, I've got the first level pretty well down at this point. So at the end of the level, they tally up the POWs you've rescued. This tally only happens if you've, uh, if you've not lost a life since you've collected those POWs. If you lose a life, all the POWs you, POWs you collected disappear. So in that way, the game strongly encourages you playing well. The POW right there, he can spawn in different positions. This time he spawned in the air, but he can also spawn inside of the fire. So that way it looks like they're cooking him. That one seems to be the rarest, though. Alright, we're going to encounter the flame shot up here. The flame shot is good for shooting multiple enemies. It's not a... It's not the most well-liked weapon in Metal Slug, that's for sure. A lot of people uh, actually pretty well dislike it because of its uh, strange arc and the fact that the shotgun just performs the same function but superior. These guys will uh, will kill us if their uh, if their rockets hit us, even if uh, even if we're standing on solid ground, but be between us and the rocket, even if there is solid ground between us and the rocket, is what I meant to say. The rockets are an incredibly efficient way to handle these boats because the rockets home in to a small degree. But even with the rocket, we can take the efficiency one step further by boarding the boat and then blasting it at point blank range like this. Very fun. The rockets do home, so if you don't feel like jumping on the boat, you don't have to. You can just shoot down at the boat. Here's the shotgun. Probably the best gun in Metal Slug. The range on this thing is surprisingly good for a shotgun. And it utterly devastates um, tanks as you're about... Yeah, like that. 
And when we rescue this guy, he'll give us a heavy machine gun. It's not that big a deal to swap out for a heavy machine gun at this point. So this mini boss fires blue explosive slash shots slowly down at us. We want to move to the left steadily, just like when we fought the copter. And there we go, that's no problem. You do automatically perform uh, melee takedowns on enemies that, um, on enemies that you're standing next to, by the way. All right, here's the metal slug again. And uh, in this section, these soldiers climbing up will try to throw grenades at us, but there's also planes that will attempt to bomb us. But if we kill them before they, uh, they unleash their bombs, the bombs just don't trigger at all. So that's important to keep in mind. The metal slug can jump, by the way, which you'll probably see shortly. Evasive maneuvers with the metal slug are very important. I, I like the uh, the contrast between the metal slug and the normal human character. His name's Marco, by the way. But I like the uh, the contrast between piloting the metal slug and piloting uh, just a human character in Marco, because the metal slug is such a powerful upgrade. Not just because the firepower is massively increased, but also because um. But also because naturally, you're gonna be thrilled at the prospect of not dying in one hit anymore. You know, having multiple hits is a godsend. I, w I would talk about this boss's design, but you can probably see how. Oh, oops, you can probably see how you're meant to evade the um. How you're meant to evade the, the attacks by by just watching. These uh these missiles trace you somewhat, but not but not quite. Oop, but not quite a uh, not quite as much as the um as some of the later the later weapons enemies have do. There we go. That went really well. That might be, might be my best mission to run. It is rather late, by the way. I tried to sleep on time and it didn't go so well. Oh, we missed we missed some of the hidden POWs back there. I really should have gotten those. Alright, it's time for mission three. Mission three is about where things get real. Uh, if a run's going particularly well, I can finish Mission 3 without using a continue, but, uh, Alan, Alan is serious business. We'll see Alan very shortly. Right now we gotta just focus on not getting, uh, sniped by the parachuting enemies, because they can be a serious problem. I've died to them many times. I also kind of like Metal Slug's uh, penchant for dark humor. Like, like you'll see a lot of small details that uh, that don't make you feel like such a good person for killing all these men, like the the love letter dropping out of the helicopter when you blow it up, which signifies that either that that person had a lover they intended to send a letter to, or their lover sent them a letter, or it might have even been their daughter or a son that sent them a letter. Or a daughter or son they were intending to send a letter to. And there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of dark comedy like that. Like war is terrible, death is terrible, and this game seems to recognize that, but also thinks that it's funny. Which is probably for the best. Metal Slug oh no. Ah, that's always the worst is missing that jump. Metal Slug in general has a pretty uh, has a pretty goofy atmosphere about it, so it's probably best to take that uh, that approach. But later games in the series uh, amped up the goofiness quite a bit, so we want to stay above Alan. We want to stay above him as much as possible, which is unfortunate because he's current. Oh, yep, there we go. Which was unfortunate because he was currently. Uh, Currently above us. Alan cannot shoot straight up, which is why we want to stay above him as much as possible. And he will occasionally, very occasionally, jump up on the uh, the same platform as us. But, oh, that's close. But that's, uh, this is really intense. Okay, good, we made it. That is always terrifying, fighting Alan. He generally only appears once per game in the games he veers in, but he's serious business. It feels like playing Smash Bros. when you're fighting Alan. You have to work. You have to think so much about your pacing, more than you do anywhere else in the game. Al Alan's just the guy. 
He's quite he's quite famous as Metal Slug goes, one of the most memorable characters. He has voice lines, uh he's threatening because his boss pattern is just that tough. Like he's much harder than some of the actual bosses the game offers. We're gonna take things slow here because there should be no reason to lose if we're patient in this section in particular. And then we gotta blow up a building, which we're gonna do as fast as possible before anyone gets a chance to stop us. Spamming grenades like that, especially at close range, is a really effective way to take out enemies quickly. That Allen fight could have gone better. I've only successfully beaten him without losing a life once. Usually I lose at least one life, but but most of the time two even. It's he's pretty tough. These tanks fire at an angle, you might have noticed. Uh, the enemy tanks, I mean. So the trick is to just not position yourself at any of the angles where they might assault you. We definitely want to rescue these POWs because they give us more cannon, and we want as much cannon as we can get, since cannon is the primary method to deal with enemy tanks. Like, uh, the, the, gun, the, big, the big blue bullets are nice and all, but, uh, but... But the cannon, the cannon, oh, goodness, I didn't even see the fellows down there throwing grenades. But the cannon is what saves us. We also have to remember the Metal Slug, even though its mobility is limited, has a surprising amount of mobility. Alright, this boss should be easy with the, with the Metal Slug. Because we have so many cannon shots. And there's a secret uh, technique to using the Metal Slug. Wow, that's not what that's supposed to sound like, is that you can actually throw grenades out of it. And jumping at, jumping out of the Metal Slug... Oh. Jumping out of the Metal Slug briefly actually gains you invincibility frames. Ah. That's, that's alright, we have so many bombs left. Now it's just uh, it's just dodging the uh, the big shot. There we go. Still haven't lost to continue. That's three levels with one credit. So so far we've only spent what a quarter. We have we've only spent a quarter. You want to stay in the middle of that boss fight in case it wasn't clear as much as possible. I am sad that we lost the metal slug. I've definitely I've definitely done better than that before, but you know this is still a pretty good run. Made it all the way to the mission four on one credit. Alright, we want to jump on this barrel, not blow it up, because if we jump on it, then we can activate the metal slug, and the metal slug will carry us through this mission. As long as we treat it right, the metal slug's uh, the key to success here. We gotta be careful about the troops jumping on us, because if they successfully uh, stay atop us for any su for su sufficient length of time, then uh, they can and will um, they can and will rip our gun off, which is crazy. I was blown away the first time I discovered that detail. It is that you? Uh, is that the enemies can actually straight up rip the gun off of the metal slug? All right, up here's the uh, the tough section of the level, where we gotta keep mind of background turrets as well as the turrets directly in front of us, and anyone throwing grenades, of course. It's pretty it's it's pretty intense. It's a lot to keep track of, but it, it's definitely doable. Yeah, this went really well actually. It doesn't usually go that well. Alright, and this boss is the boss that can die the fastest if you know what you're doing, but it's pretty hard to... Yeah. It's it's pretty hard to, um... Pretty hard to get the right spacing. Alright, let's... Let's... Yeah, do that. Alright, I think they should be pretty near death at this point. Yeah. It's all about the spacing with these guys. They don't, they try to squeeze you out, you know? Oh, alright. Still one credit. 
I'm actually surprised. I don't think I've ever done a run this good. Uh, I I've gotten five credit clears years ago, back when I played this game on the Wii, but I don't know if I've ever gotten a run this good yet. There are two more missions left, but to say that the last mission is the doozy would be a massive understatement. This this mission's no ju no joke. The enemy placement just gets a lot more challenging from here. A lot more snipers, as you're seeing. So many more snipers. Oh no! Duck that. It's pretty. It's pretty difficult to make live commentary for a game like this, honestly, just because of how intense it is. Occasionally, enemies will throw fireworks at you instead of grenades, and when that happens, uh, frankly, oh, that 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 uh, that tank down there shot us. And when that happens, uh, frankly, just shoot the grenades because unlike normal grenades, the firework grenades can be shot into the air. Which ensures that they don't actually damage you. This section is deceptively easy. Deceptively easy, I say, as I get hit. As, as soon as a plane drops the missile, just jump. It's That's all you gotta do. Oh. Well, that could have gone better, but... It's grenade spamming time. Alright, give me in that second metal slug. All right, if we hurry up, we can get past, uh... All right, we're, we're making we're making really good progress, actually. Powering through that section and getting to the boss feels exceptionally good. And we still have two hits left for the boss proper, which feels even better. All right, let's... Yeah, let's use a self-destruct. And throw some bombs. Ah. Well, there goes our first continue, but we made it all the way to the level 5 boss. So, that's great, actually. Also, it really disturbs me how wrong the continue sound effects are. They're so wrong. Alright, we need to keep the machine gun on us to shoot those missiles that are coming in. I'm actually... Like, straight up shocked how well this run is going. I had intended to say many more things about Metal Slug and the game design proper. But this game eats so much attention. You have to be absolutely constantly on guard while playing this game. I almost made it to the last level without using a credit, which I... I was... I'm stunned by, frankly. I don't think I've ever had a run that good. Ever, and all the time I've played Metal Slug. Shotgun's good. We definitely want the shotgun. Can you... I meant to throw that the other way. Can you guys... Uh, well, I mean, with how with how much good luck we've had lately, uh, a loss like that isn't so such a big deal, but we definitely need to conserve as many continues as possible for the final boss, because the final boss is one heck of a damage sponge. And even though, uh, if it weren't a damage sponge, it might be the easiest boss. It is a damage sponge, so we have to work with the, uh, work with the reality we've got, not the reality we want. It's time to throw grenades. Stay on the far... I'm not actually sure what killed me there. We want to stay on the far right of the screen while they're lobbing grenades like that, is what I was about to say, but I'm not sure it mattered very much, given the, uh, given the whole... the whole we died situation. All right, let me just jump very carefully over these grenades. I'm, I meant bazooka shots. Oh, I'm out of... I was, uh, I was out of, um... out of grenades, which I did not notice in time to prevent myself from getting smoked. Let's just see if we can't blow this up in time. And something got me on fire. I'm not sure what... You can see what I meant by the uh, the final level being a doozy, I think. Like, you need to have your reflexes turned on for this level. Even if you know in advance what's coming, it's hard. Alright, next is the water section. Which can be really easy. Assuming you know where to point the gun. We get a big gun for this section. 
And if I remember where to point it, it should be easy. I think you point it here. I think that's the right way to point it. We'll see. Uh, empirical evidence will uh, will bear this out. Get out, get out of the turret. You you want to get out of the turret ASAP when the uh, when the parachuting guys come down because you're a sitting duck. You do have invincibility frames as you get out of the turret though. So remembering that you have invincibility frames when you get out of the turret that's a godsend. If we can't jump over, ah, that's rough. That's probably one of the most clever hazards in the game is when you have the helicopter bearing down on you, but also uh, that bunch of I should have I should have moved sooner, but also those bunch of uh, those bunch of planes firing at you with um with their bombs because it's a uh, it's just it's just a very pure hazard. All right, that was successful, terrifying but successful. We can actually shoot the uh, the missiles as they come down on us to push them up, which is very very beneficial, as you might imagine, being able to do that. All right, and we'll jump now and maximize those invincibility frames. This might be the best run of this level I've ever had. And th that's probably saying something because you might have noticed we are dying a whole bunch. But we got to we got to do our best. That's all this has ever been about. I see a couple more men down there waiting to jump up. I'm waiting for him. There they go. I definitely use the invincibility frames on that turret much better uh, than I ever had previously. Ah, wasn't quite fast enough. That one's rough. When the helicopters just start shooting at faster intervals, that's tough stuff. But we can we can do this. That's, that's practically just practice for the boss fight. Speaking of which, the boss fight is right up here, so if everybody would just leave me alone for a minute. Alright, so what you want to do is stand at an angle that's awkward for this guy to shoot at. This is the final boss. This is Dolph Morden. And what you want to do is be at the most awkward angle possible for him to shoot you. That's, that's the technique. And he, as was previously described, is a massive, massive bullet sponge. He just will not go down. You, you figure that this normal human guy, taking so many blows to the face, might go down a bit sooner. But no, he, do he doesn't. And you can see, it's not like I don't... It's not like I don't understand his pattern, right? It's not like I don't understand... Oop, that was close. It's not like I don't understand his moveset. I don't I don't know what the last time is that I've had my reflexes push this hard. My eyes twitching a bit. Ah, that was the wrong time to jump. Jumping there? Big mistake. We're gonna wait till all these missiles pass before we, uh, before we switch, um, to, um... Alright, here's the, here's the rough one. This is the roughest one. Okay, we made it. You just, you just have to shoot those out of the air. But standing in the right spot to do that, surprisingly tough. Oh, he, he's, he's pretty heavily damaged, I can see that. It's smoking. We gotta bait the missiles and then jump over them. Ah, I ran right into that one. But yeah, you, hopefully you can tell this is pretty intense for me. Like, uh, it's rough stuff, this boss. And if you stand underneath him, he uses the Gatling gun, as you saw there. Rocket's pretty good for this, because the rocket homes in. Gotta bait the missiles, gotta bait them. Alright, how many credits do we have? One more. 
Can you can you can you tell what I meant about this guy being a bullet sponge? There we go. We got him. Finally, finally a five credit clear. I was working on that for like a week. Anyway, that's Metal Slug. I love Metal Slug. I'll let you enjoy the surprisingly poignant ending all by yourself. I love Metal Slug. I love it. It's great. Uh, it, did it pause? I don't want it to pause. There we go. Let me just get out of here so that way you can see the... Uh, that way you can see the ending. All right, enjoy yourself. Okay. Wow, that was uh, that was miserable. Uh, that that rendition of the Metal Slug theme, I can't believe. Like, wow, they they really butchered that. Wow, but that is something that blew me away the first time I played Metal Slug was that ending, just how incredibly uh, somber it was. You know, you might think you're the good guy in this game, but then you see that paper airplane sweeping over the. Uh, the destroyed landscapes, the slaughtered soldiers, it really makes you think about what you've done in this game. And when I played this to completion the first time, that shocked me. But it's one of the many, many reasons I love Metal Slug. I think it's one of the fairest arcade games. It, it encourages uh, player improvement in a really fun and exciting way. All of the hits are avoidable. And the last level ramps things up in just the right way. If I had any particular complaints, that final boss is a real, real bullet sponge. But otherwise, I love Metal Slug. Probably my favorite running gun game.